Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Thumbs up, thumbs up. I always ask for a thumbs up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're going to get up and move in a few seconds. Um, and what I want to do today is kind of give you a brief overview of what the games for health and what Exit Games look like uh, in the general space, in the public eye. And for some of you who may not know what Exit Games are, they're essentially a game, most likely using technology. Um, that requires physical movement. So there's a few examples. We're going to see some lots of pictures of them uh, throughout the presentation, and you've seen a couple already um, today. On the uh, left-hand side, you see a game, uh, a, a, a teenager playing uh, EA, Sports, um, EA Sports fitness game uh, with sensors on the control and taped to his leg. But we're going to look at that a whole concept of games and how they can be fun and how they can be motivating, just like that nice wheel picture it has uh, depicted all those different types of words that use play. Um, we don't have to talk too much about the, the importance of physical activity in our daily lives. Obviously, it is very crucial. And if we don't, uh, if we are not active enough, like today or other days when we're sitting down off often, we have complications, especially in the teenage population. That's the primary population I look at and research is uh, adults, uh, ad adolescents, and, um, and teenagers. And so we know there's, there's problems with uh, type 2 diabetes. We know there's problems with arteriosclerosis and bone density, and ob obviously the mental health issue of being overweight or being obese. Um, we know that kids are more... Uh, more sedentary now, they play more games, they, they are on average sitting and, uh, and consuming media six to eight hours a day. Um, so that means cell phones, um, MP3 players, video games, computers, uh, whatever device, they're consuming lots of media, but the majority of the time they are sitting down. That's a big, big problem uh, which contributes to our obesity uh, epidemic. Um, not only that, I, I was looking through this research again by Rideout in 2010, and they said about 56% of the students, uh, of teenagers, or kids 8 to 18, have a game console in their bedroom. So not only are they sedentary, they actually have consoles that make them more sedentary in their, in their, in their um, bedrooms, which therefore they also have a TV in their bedrooms. So what I like to look at is, I like to look, I look, to look at using video games or technology in ways that requires them to be physically active. I look at populations, as I mentioned previously, in adolescence, but I also look at special populations, um, and the picture you see here on the right-hand side is um, a little girl with spina bifida. I look at ways to use off-the-shelf games uh, in a way that is uh, suitable for the different populations. I think that's a really important thing to do for those who are looking to use games is just, is it customizable? Is it usable in the populations that you're interested in? And that's a really important factor to look at. And the games itself take a lot of different shapes. And we're going to see them, uh, a few examples of them in a, in a few seconds. But what makes, us, what makes us healthy? According to this little infographic, 50% of our behaviors uh, make us healthy. And then 20% uh, is, is the environment. That kind of harkens back to the discussion yesterday about the degrees of separation. What makes us healthy? Well, really, it's only two degrees. It's our family, our friends, right? And then it's the environment around us. Those make up the big majority that influence what our health behaviors and health profiles will eventually become. But obviously, we're spending a lot of money on medical services. So if we can find a way to get people to be more active, to take care of themselves, to have better health outcomes in, on their own, to manage their own health, then I think that could be a, a great benefit to all of us. And that's something the Rob Wood Johnson Foundation, the Games for Health Project, is looking to sponsor and, and continue to, to advocate for this uh, increased, increased level of health. I want to focus in on three things today. And one, that game, play, and tech are not four-letter words. Oh, they are four-letter words, okay? <laughs> but they're not evil, dirty, or naughty words. They should be a part of our regular vocabulary because we should not be afraid of it. And I don't think people here are afraid of change, because otherwise I don't think you would be here. But I, I, I want to expand your mind a little bit more, because it was interesting, we, at the beginning, someone asked who, how many people have been to the Games for Health conference, and we want to open you up to that space, um, and there's a lot of opportunities there. The second thing is that programming, whenever you use 
uh, exergames or uh, active gaming technology is really, really crucial. You can't just give a game to someone and expect them to get healthier or get better. That's not going to happen. And we'll look at a couple examples of that. And then I think the third point I really want to hammer home today is that health data integration, and especially the, the, the M word, mobile, right? The mobile world is going to rule. And we all know that, and that, that's coming, uh, you know, that, that's obvious, and I got some examples of that as well. But games should provide children, adolescents, or even adults the opportunity to play. If we don't provide opportunities in the environment, at school, and at home, we're not going to get over this, this, this epidemic. So it's, it goes back to the, that whole Bromfield Brenner um, ecological systems theory that it takes a, an entire village around them to really support the, the outcomes that you want to gain. If you want them to be more active, you want to eat, help them eat better, well, you have, you have to have better government policies. You have to have better school policies. You have to have better home policies. You have to have better personal policies to get better eating or get better act, activity in, your, in their lives. It's got to be fun. It's got to be engaging. And to the point of our panel, it doesn't matter if it's in the mind, if it's, if, it's, if it's thought up, if it's through a physical interface or a virtual interface. If, uh, if a player is engaged in a game, they are, in essence, doing, having a social object. The social object is this, uh, is this uh, um, suspended relief opportunity to problem solve, and that's a game. If they're involved in a game, if they're trying to solve and touch a, touch a puzzle, touch a color, that's problem solving, that's game, that's play, and that hopefully will bring out the benefits that we, that we intended them to have. Um, that games, oh, by the way, can be exercised if done pro appropriately and has the right opportunities and right intensities and the right duration, we can actually get exercise involved. Now, there's, you, may, you may have heard a lot of things about video games may not be the best thing to buy for your kids for the, for the Christmas holidays and they don't bring about positive physical activity or moderate to vigorous physical activity. But again, there's a couple studies that have gone, come out and I agree with some of the findings that they, they found low to moderate intensity activity being, being discovered. But what they weren't looking at, it was the entire picture and the possibilities. Um, and we can get there, and from my research, we can get them into the moderate to vigorous intensity zones. I'm not going to present any data from my, my, my research um, today. You can con contact me later or uh, take a look at my blog to get some of that information. Um, like I said, they can exercise. Now, in this case, here's a game that, little, uh, that children, adults, teens can play, and they're picking up a medicine ball. And they're picking up a medicine ball and putting it down a tube. Then they're throwing it down a tube. They're, what other game would get you to do that? Would you just do a normal, would, you, would a child get up and pick up a medicine ball, move it to a spot over here, and then decide, hmm, I think I'll take this medicine ball and put it over here? No, but you put some technology in place, you put some, some goals, lights, sounds, and they're gonna move, and they're gonna be using a heavy ball, and they can play repeated, measure, uh, repeated uh, levels and, get, and opportunities. So games have an opportunity, uh, give us an opportunity, a gateway into their world. And that's really important that we think of, what do kids like to do? They know technology, they know games. Let's meet them where they're at. Meet them where they're at and see if we can get, bring about the health outcomes that we're looking to, to, to accomplish. I wanna show you uh, really quickly a, a quick video uh, about Dave who loves to play cardio stuff, but we introduced some other exercise games, and this is the game I was mentioning. He's got sensors on their leg and sensors in his hand. If we could play that video, that'd be great. Um, and then we could talk about some of the things that he accomplished. This is a program I, um, I helped uh, coordinate um, called the Healthy Now Teen Program. And what we do is we coordinate regular activities with some virtual activities to give these kids, these teens with uh, that want to lose some weight and want to be more active, we want to give them an opportunity to do that in a safe environment. And that's the other important part we want to talk about today. Pause it there for a second. Can we pause it there for a second? All right. 
When it says sit up, sit up, sit up, I want you to stand up, okay? This is, this is the participatory part of the conference, okay? All right, so let's play it again. Sit, you're going to go up and down, up and down every time they say sit up, sit up, sit up. Oh, are we going to lose it? Oh, I think we lost it. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. That's okay. That's all right, we'll get back. To, if we have time, we'll do it after, okay? Um, I, th I saw a lot of people like, oh, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up. Um, but uh, what defines a success? What defines a good opportunity? What defines a good game? Well, obviously, we have to think about what are the abilities and capabilities and present level of performance of the people that we want to serve. Second thing is choose a tool. If it involves technology, if it involves a game, make sure it's the right tool. And then three, what were the results? And then really come back in that circuitous um, effect. Look at that in terms of defining your success. Um, even if someone as popular as Jeremy Lin, who's found a lot of success, maybe a lot of failure, uh, he was playing DDR, yet he failed, you know, so, but he had fun. If it's fun, if it's engaging, let's do it. Let's see how we can adopt it for our populations to have better health outcomes. Um, as I mentioned before, who's going to be improved by mobile health? This is a great, great infographic by Misfit. Um, I don't have their, their new device that they're going to be coming out, but we're we'll looking at the number of people that have devices. We know um, mobile health will be a big player in this area, whether it be through information, whether it be through fitness tracking, whether it be through other devices or just basic graphics. Even something as simple as designing your own run, but to make it look like a picture. You can go on right now with a free mobile app. If you go to figurerunning.com, get a free app, and you can go and design your own own, uh, own shape, whatever you want. We did, we did the Boston Red Sox last year. Um, mobile health is really big right now. The big Kickstarter project by Pebble, um, they, they, they got eight million. They were looking for less than 100,000. They got a lot more. And the integration to the APIs through different, different groups like RunKeeper is, go is going to be very, um, is, a, is a very big portion of the mobile industry. A, a, a virtual reality bike called Expresso has an app to track your activity. Body Media has an app. Everyone's got an app. And mobile will rule. And as Apple comes out with their phone, uh, hopefully phone watch, then we might see the, um, a, a total integration, a, ne a new integration of, um, of sensors. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like, obviously, but it might look like that. There's games out there that you can use on your mobile de device. A snake might be chasing you. Zombies can chase you. Um, you can integrate Fitbit. How many people have Fitbit or some type of tracker? You can play this game, this Fitbit, but once you're playing on the game, you get 20 minutes on the game. After that, it cuts you off to make sure you go and move and collect more points. How do we do that? How do we integrate these technologies? Well, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big dilemma, but we have the opportunity. Even, even making your own dance moves and sharing it online, the whole socialization factor is such a big, uh, big aspect. And how are we going to converge all these networks? Well, there's a lot of big groups doing that now. Um, obviously. Mickey Mouse, the whole this Disney world is great at integrating everything and making sure that uh, everything goes well. But remember, the more you play, the less you pay. <laughs> this, the actual title is the more you play, the less you pay per day. But I believe the more we play in general, the more we stand up and, and engage in fun activities, the less you'll pay in the long run. How do we do it? We've got to make it customizable. We have to make, make sure that it's suitable for the different needs of the, of the people. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation obviously has been sponsoring the, the uh, Games for Health movement. A, the AHA and Nintendo has partnerships. Xbox uh, and NH, the NFL Players Association has got a, pl a partnership. The President's Council of Fitness has a, a partnership to sponsor activities, uh, games that are, require physical activity. So we're starting to see this integration, the synthesis, these networks converging together. But we need to take advantage of the video game motivation. We need to find other ways for kids to, be, to attain moderate to rigorous physical activity. We have to think of the different environments, home school, envi home school and the community. They have to be socially supportive. They've got to be rewarding. We have to have good programmers, good people to lead them. But what we think is that maybe these games Maybe some of these activities and these groups that, that they, they work together might be a gateway to a healthier lifestyle, maybe away from these games. We're not saying games are, should be for everyone and everyone's got to do games all day, every day, but we want you to be open to trying a game and seeing if that leverages uh, opportunities to get, to get more active. Um, I want to thank you for, for, for listening. I want to thank uh, Ben and Jay and Beth for, for uh, inviting us to here to speak. 
And um, if there's anything else you want to speak about or talk uh, afterwards, I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you.